Hey everyone, it's Ross. We're gonna do a little short one here because it's getting dark. It's also really cold out here. I'm shivering. I'm trying my best to film a video for you guys <laughs> as I'm shivering a little bit here. I'm bundled up, but it's not really helping. Um, this video is a bit of an announcement, a bit of a warning to all of you guys in the Northeast. I know a lot of you have already had a pretty significant low temperature this winter. But this is the first one that we're really getting. It's going to get down to 7 degrees, I believe, Sunday night or Sunday morning and Monday night. So we're going to have two back-to-back 7-degree -back lows. That's really low, um, especially for figs. That's like a make-it-or-break-it temperature there for a lot of different varieties, I would say. Um, and we're going to find out exactly what is going to take damage. I'm going to be closely monitoring these guys. Um, for you guys though, before I get into what I'm going to do, I would recommend protecting these. If you're going to protect them on any day of the year, I mean, this would be the day, right? Get yourself a tarp. This is a pretty thin one. Get yourself some moving blankets, blankets of any kind, sheets, plastic, any material that you can find to help insulate these guys, cover them. Um, if you're going to wrap them permanently all winter time, like a lot of people do, you need some kind of permeability there, right? You don't want the moisture to get trapped in there. Um, we haven't really talked about wrapping them yet, but I don't really recommend wrapping them. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people fail and their entire tree dies and, you know, the results are not really um, something that I think is, uh, it's, people have done it reliably, don't get me wrong. But for me, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort for little reward because at the end of the day, your tree could still die. You know, um, but if you were gonna wrap it, you need something permeable, something that is the air can get in and get out. You don't want water to get in, but you don't want moisture to be trapped in there. Okay, so um, it's really tricky, but you can do it. Otherwise, I would just wrap them. You know, these two days. You could also put on um, Christmas lights. Turn them on. That's about four to five degrees, I believe. So. You know, instead of 7 degrees, you now have the branches at uh, 12 degrees. That's a pretty big difference. Um, we've already gotten through 13 degrees, so we know we can get down below that. Um, I've obviously observed my trees. We did a video on this. We saw that my Figo Preto here and the Italian 258 took a big, a big hit on Thanksgiving night, 13 degree Fahrenheit low. Um, and they took a lot of damage. So the fact that they've taken a lot of damage here is just really uh, not that big of a deal, but we need to know why they took the damage. And from this point on, what is affected and how, so that if this seven degree low does damage these trees in any way, I need to know it was because of that seven degree low. So anything this point forward, and this is what I'm doing here, is I'm going to be monitoring these trees. Put a couple thermometers out here. We're also going to take soil temperature uh, readings because if you guys remember when we we did a video on this, a couple of videos, we're experimenting greatly with planting fig trees at higher depths. We're putting them above grade to give them more access to heat during the summertime. This obviously puts them at a big detriment in the wintertime but if you can protect them with mulch and rocks, it will keep the soil warmer. That's exactly what you see here with my hardy Chicago. This little guy had survived last year and uh, he's planted four to six inches above grade. And because he's four to six inches above grade, he has access to way more heat during the season. So we're doing that with other trees, right? We put this one on a raised bed. I think this one is eight inches above grade. Cover that with a whole bunch of soil and rocks. And this tree over here is just straight up planted in a raised bed that's a foot high. So it, its entire root ball for the most part is planted above grade. You can see it's doing all right. There's very little dieback on it except for the very tippy tops of the plant. Um, but I'm expecting this one to first die. And here's how I'll know that these trees will die, right? The seven degree low comes in. I take a soil temperature reading it's below 17 degrees. If it gets below 17 degrees, these roots are gonna take some damage. And if the roots start to take damage, they could die, which will kill the tree. And if the entirety of the tree dies, 
then I know there's some kind of freak accident that killed these trees, um, which would be at the soil level most, most of the time. So if you lose your entire tree, it's probably because something happened at the soil level. So if I come out here in the spring in May, and these, this tree's dead, that tree's dead, well, I know it's because they were planted too high, okay? And then I can adjust that for future years and future plantings. Now, if they were to just take some damage, right? Just the wood was, was just getting damaged a little bit. Or even if it died all the way back to the ground and then re-sprouted, well, then that means the seven degree low was the cause of this year's misfortune. Because we have a theory there, right? right? That it's not the cold, but it is the wind and the desiccation that's killing these trees. But we solved the desiccation problem, right? We sprayed them with wilt proof, three different coats. We got them really well protected. They're keeping in all that moisture. We just gotta keep them away from the cold. And this seven degree low is gonna be a really, really good test. So that's a bit of my announcement and that's what I'm gonna be doing out here, guys. I'm gonna come out here probably at like, <laughs> 3 a.m. or something take some temperature readings and go back inside and go to sleep you know i'm uh gonna be really serious about this and try to make this as scientific as humanly possible right as we've said we i know what's happened to these trees as of thanksgiving that 13 degree low i should check them again and see give them a little scratch test see what's living and what's not and then when the seven degree lows come in i can make some decisions as to okay is anything damaged and that'll be about a month from now i won't know if there was any damage this upcoming sunday or monday until a month from now believe it or not um, that's how long it takes for these trees to show any damage so um you know protect your trees guys get out there put something on them if you haven't done that already we may do something on wrapping you know uh i promised you guys i would so We'll probably get out here on a warm day when I have a free weekend. We'll show you guys how to wrap these things. But as of right now, you haven't really had to wrap them in this part of the uh, world as of yet. You know, a lot of people wrap them so early that it's actually a bad thing. Uh, voles find a nice little spot to hide in there. You get a lot of rain, too much moisture, a lot of mold. Kill your tree that way. So it's better to wrap them later in the season than earlier in the season. You definitely wanted to wrap them, though, before Thanksgiving. Um, so, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this one. I'll talk to you all soon. Good luck.